Hello and welcome to this BIM 360 Document Management Overview with me, Stuart Tanfield, Technical Specialist for Design and Construction here at Autodesk. So what are the challenges we face in collaboration in any given project delivery? Well here we can see a high level view of the organisations that may be involved within a typical project. We can see the information they're producing and the purpose for which they are producing it, as well as an outline of how that information is distributed as well as received. AC projects are complex and the amount of project information produced is significant. The issue we have is the data being produced and the workflows used are often not connected. This means managing that level of information and being able to find and reuse it becomes very challenging. We also have to support and manage the high frequency of information update and exchange. This can be complicated as information can often be held in siloed environments that do not support a collaborative approach. And being able to find and view latest information or a particular file can be very limiting. The knock-on effect this has on a project ultimately appears in project delays, as producing this information using these methods can be very, very challenging. So if we review a selection of the traditional tools and platforms used for sharing project information in this way, we can see that these tools have not necessarily been created with design workflows in mind. Um, this often means files are required to be downloaded and opened in native authoring tools um, just to be able to view the content that's contained within. So any further commenting or marks up, markups are often captured in a manual way through screenshots um, and then these are attached to an email by way of transmitting and communicating with other project members. Whilst other platforms provide issues when looking to work remotely or when looking to, for external access and of course integration into other systems is often one of the biggest hurdles. So how does BIM 360 help us to overcome the collaboration challenges we typically face in project delivery? Well here we can see a handful of examples where BIM 360 can help improve the way information is produced and communicated to the extended project delivery teams. Whether we're providing secure access to make sure the right information is available to the right people at the right time, and whether that's in the office or out in the field, having the ability to manage the versions to make sure that that information being accessed is the very latest project information is really important. Not only that, but being able to compare against previous versions is also critical. So using a single platform, we are able to unify data production and the method for distribution, as well as simplifying the viewing capabilities. Being able to view many different 2D and 3D file types means we remove the need for, to use authoring tools just to view files, and this is often the case. Through this viewing platform, we can further provide markups and comments, as well as assigning issues to fellow project members. We can then track these issues and make sure that they've been resolved. All of this is held within one single environment. So looking into the BIM 360 platform, we can see we're met with a project folder structure. And this can follow any structure you wish, but here we have work in progress, shared, published, and archived as you would expect. If we expand the folder structure, you can see we have subdiscipline folders. And these folders are only accessible by the specific design discipline teams or individuals. And this is obviously controlled through folder permissions, where simple sliders will assign the appropriate levels to the individuals, companies, or roles. Looking back into our folder structure, we can change the way the view is presented to thumbnails, for example, where we can see the information that's contained within each of the files. If we take a look at one of the files we have in BIM 360, uh, you'll see we have the ability to add metadata. And as I scroll across, you'll see the seven faceted metadata unique ID that we're required to produce has been assigned. We can control the assignment of metadata simply by using a list of predefined dropdowns. So having some core fundamental requirements enabled, we can make sure that we follow a consistent approach in entering this project information. This also means that at a later stage, we're going to be able to use that metadata to search and recall for the information that we may require. BIM 360 also supports OCR, so Optical Character Recognition, and we're able to apply the metadata to PDF files through the automatic extraction of the information present in the file. So by clicking on a file, we're taken into the Large Model Viewer. Uh, this gives us the ability to view and handle extremely large and complex files, which would ordinarily cause our desktop computers to struggle with regards to processing power. So as mentioned before, here we're able to view a large variety of 2D and 3D files such as Revit, Navisworks, AutoCAD, IFC, as well as many other common 2D and 3D file formats. This now means that non-designers 
uh, have the ability to interrogate project information and documents without the need to install desktop design authoring tools. And we also have the ability to view office files, so Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, um, and these can be edited uh, right from within the viewer. So here we're viewing a Revit model. And if we look to the left, we can select to view any of the 2D sheets which are associated with the file. By clicking into those sheets, I can then leave comments and markups. The 3D view allows us to interrogate the model in a number of ways. We can select components and view the properties which have been created from within Revit. And we can also enhance the information within those properties by including URLs. This can provide information for things like operation and maintenance, uh, or can simply provide us with information around the products by leading us to a product page. We can take measurements around the model, and this provides validation where we may need it, for example in ceiling voids, to give us building services, uh, zonal areas that we can work within. We can also take sections through the model. We can change the direction and orientation of the section to help give us greater views and insights into how the building may have been developed. And this really does help us to understand where there may be any uh, design intricacies that we may need to account for. We can also use the split view mode. And this means that we can view a 3D model and a plan side by side, again, helping to provide clarity around the design. We may also want to compare the versions for review. Here we can see we are on version nine. And if we click to view the history, we can see the audit trail indicating when each version was created. And here I can clearly see that I'm on the most recent version, as the current button indicates. By selecting compare and choosing the two models that I want to contrast, I can apply the compare tool. BIM 360 will now present the results in a very graphical manner, indicating which parts may have been added, removed or modified. By choosing to highlight or hide in these categories, we can quickly and clearly see what has changed. And by highlighting a modified component, this means we are able to distinguish where the changes have happened by viewing the previous version. Additionally, we can export the list of changes for use elsewhere. It's possible to compare the 2D layouts, and here our slider identifies the changes. BIM 360 offers unique markup and commenting capabilities. Using our simple tools, we can identify areas that may need further attention, and we can also add comments. Once we've done this, we can then share it with the wider project team. And this also means we're able to review any of these comments that have been made at a later stage. And this is due to the fact that we provide a full audit trail of each of our markups. So viewing our designs, we can also create issues. And this can be done in a 2D or 3D view. So here we can place pins and assign any details for the issue. And we can then assign the issue to any particular project member or organisation. We can also assign due dates and provide any further details as comments if we require. We can review any project issues at any stage and we can expand those issues to look at the detail behind it, as well as review any documentation that may be associated with that issue. We can then respond to the issue, and this can be the end close if appropriate. Once we do this, we are still able to go and search on any of the issues that have been created throughout the project. Reviewing our project issues, we're able to define what we're looking for through the use of our filter tools. Once these are applied, we will populate a more specific list of issues, which can then be reviewed or in fact exported as a PDF or CSV report, or indeed exported as a BCF file format. So navigating to Project Home, here we can see that the information that has been generated throughout the project is now visible. The open issues that we've been creating and interacting with are shown, and this allows us to see further details once we click. So using the platform and the tools to view, interrogate, comment, mark up, and communicate issues means we're finally ready to publish our information and transition this from a work in progress environment to a shared. So by selecting a file that I want to approve, I can submit and begin the check, review and approve process. And as a reviewer, I can now begin the approval process. Approving the file through the various check, review and approve stages, it can now be transitioned into the shared environment within BIM 360. So if we want to group any information to search for at a later stage, we can add it to a set. So here we'll add it to a set S1 uh, for coordination. The benefit of this means we're able to search any sets to surface any of the relevant information. 
This information is then provided back to us in a filtered state so that we only see the information that we need and nothing more. The approval process allows us to move information from one environment to another in a controlled and managed way, allowing other project design members to view the right information at the right time. Finally, using the BIM360 desktop connector, we're able to access our design information from BIM360 directly within our authoring tools. Furthermore, we're able to incorporate approved shared project information into our design files by using the desktop connector. We can use this to navigate to find the relevant files we want to link in and use these to help inform us when making our own design decisions. As the link files update, we can simply reload the latest shared data to reflect any changes. This iterative process will continue through the project lifecycle using comments, issues and markups whilst containing and managing all project information and audit trails in one central location.